What's up everyone, my name is Alpha, and today we're back with another Pokemon Challenge video. Today we're on Pokemon Radical Red, just like always, you know. Last week we experimented a little bit, we're back to try and true Radical Red. Today's challenge will be, can I beat Pokemon Radical Red using only Pokemon with base stat totals under 500? Now, if you guys don't know, the base stat total is all their stats combined. Most of the time, good Pokemon are actually over 600. Under 300 is basically where Little Cup is, I think. 300 to 400-ish. It's going to be filled with all the Little Cup Pokemon, all the middle stage Pokemon, and some fully evolved Pokemon. Not all of them, obviously, since it's only base stat 500. And our challenge is going to be trying to beat Radical Red with just these Pokemon. So we're going to see how well they do against Radical Red. Not to mention the final rule of this challenge will be each of my Pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys in the comments. So thank you so much for leaving a comment in the previous challenge video. If you guys want to be nicknamed after a future Pokemon in my future challenge video, just drop it in the comments and hopefully I'll pick yours. And while you're down there leaving a comment, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me that you guys can. We are very close. I'm going to check in real time. We're actually at 38,734 subs. If we can get to 40,000 by the end of the year, we can do it. Why would we set a goal? Every single year, I set a goal for us, and we just barely not hit it. Let's hit the goal for me, please. Anyways, let's get into the challenge video itself. Okay, to begin off our challenge, obviously, none of the stars are going to be under 500, I don't think. I'm pretty sure they're not, so I just didn't even bother checking. Our first Pokemon is going to be an Alola Rattata, which is going to be a normal and dark type Pokemon. You can see on the screen, fully evolved Raticate, it's under 500 base stat total. And as well, we go into the forest and we catch ourselves a Phantom, which is going to evolve into a Trevenant. And for each of the Pokemon I catch, I'm going to add the base stat total on screen, just so you guys know I'm not cheating. And that's why I actually go into Diglett's cave and catch myself a Diglett, which is kind of funny. So we caught ourselves a Diglett, and then we can head into the Egg Merchant in Pewter City. Get ourselves a really good Pokemon, which is going to be a Fletchling. You guys actually saw in the intro that Talonflame is the very first Pokemon listed that is at 499 base stat total. So we're able to get Talonflame on the team, which is amazing. We're going to try to use more unique Pokemon that we haven't used too much through our challenge video. So that's why I have a Diglett, I have a Rattata, some new Pokemon you guys haven't seen. Uh, from there, we're going to actually let our Diglett destroy down Faulkner, which is going to be an easy fight. Super easy mini boss for our Diglett. And then we can move on and face off against Brock next. Brock is going to be the rock type gym leader of the game. And we're going to start the battle off against him using my Phantom, actually. Phantom's going to Leech Seed into the Geodude just to do some chip damage and break his sturdy. Accidentally Leech Seed into the Vulpix, misclicked. But that actually works out better for me as I'm able to switch out to my Diglett next. Diglett's able to magnitude knock out the Vulpix with a magnitude 10. A little overkill. And we're also able to knock out the Judo, which is amazing. And then his next Pokemon will be an Onyx. Not sure why he didn't send out his Arkin, but I am able to get a magnitude 8 on the Onyx. Get him to use his Berry Juice. Uh, sacrifice my Diglett. And then go out to my Phantom to Branch Poke into his Arkin. And at this point, it's basically over because he's unable to really attack me. I am able to Branch Poke into him once again. And he's able to pluck me. I go down. I switch out into my Rotata. And Rotata gets two flinches against the Onyx. Able to knock out the Onyx and also knock out the Arkin for us. And Rotata's already seeing a lot of usage. Uh, our next Pokemon is going to be in the form of a Shroomish. Which Breloom obviously has a base stat total under 500. So from there, our team is actually pretty set. And it actually destroys this mini boss in Mount Moon. This battle is normally actually very difficult. And I'm very surprised that my team just demolishing me. Not a single issue at all. We also beat Archer after this battle super easily. And we're able to go out and get ourselves our next Pokemon, which is going to be in the form of Panpour. Panpour is also going to have his hidden ability. So it's super nice, super great. So... From there, we're able to go out into the second gym of the game. We're able to face off against Misty next. Misty is going to be the water type gym leader in the game. We're able to magnitude into her frog there and also her Floatzel, which a lot of damage to both of them. And I'm able to go out to my Raticate to actually Swords Dance, but he confuses me with a water pose. Luckily enough, I don't hit myself. I knock out the Floatzel and also the Starmie, surprisingly, and also Frog there. I'm knocking out everything. Raticate is MVP starting this off. I'm able to knock out Lantern and sweep down Misty with my Raticate, essentially. From there, though, we can move on straight into the SS and uh, get our lucky eggs, get everything pretty easily, get the HM for cut, and now we're able to face off against Lieutenant Surge next. Lieutenant Surge will be the electric type gym leader in the game, and we're able to start the battle off against him using my Raticate. Raticate is able to sword stance and then crunch into his Vig Volt to knock him out, and also his Bolton. Huge plays from my Eradicate, it's doing so much work. If I went for another Swords Dance here, I might have been able to sweep him fully, but I went for a Crunch to knock out the Pinchurchin and do a lot of chip damage to the Manectric as he knocks me out, unfortunately. And then from there, my team, I got the rest of my team. So I'm able to Bodos into the Raichu and also the Manectric to knock them both out, and we beat Surge. So super easy battle. From there, though, we're going to head into the Rock Tunnel, which 
I mean, by now, if you guys are over the age of four, <laughs> you guys should be able to get through Rock Tunnel without Flash. If you guys don't know how to get through Rock Tunnel, I honestly suggest you guys learn the route for Rock Tunnel. Because I'm I saw a lot of comments saying, how does he play with no flash? Obviously, I get stuck a little bit walking into the walls, but I'm able to get out of Rock Tunnel pretty safely. Like I go through it within like a couple seconds. Uh, from there, we're going to face off against Erica next. Erica is going to be the grass type gym leader in the game. And we're going to start the battle off against her using my Talonflame. Talonflame is obviously going to do a lot of damage to the Rillaboom to start with dual wing beat. And then she goes out into her Electrode next, which is going to be a lot scarier than I thought. So I switch out to my Simipore. I know it's just a free stack. It wasn't going to do anything in this battle. Then I go to my Trevenant, which baits him out into a bunch of Chloroplasts. And I'm able to Phantom Force, knock him down to low HP, and he'll knock himself out and me as well, which is kind of annoying, but it works out because we knock out the Electrode. Next up, I can switch out into my Breloom. Then I'm able to go to my Duck Shield to bait out the Sludge Bomb and Bodos to lower his speed, which is super nice. I then go out into my Radicate to Swords Dance and then hopefully wake up and Double Edge to knock out the Venusaur. Next up, she can switch out into her Meganium, which I'm able to get a Sucker Punch. Switch out into my Talent Flame to do a Wing Beat to knock her out, which is super nice. And then her next two Pokemon will be a Rillaboom and a Superior, which my Talent Flame is able to knock out super easily. And from there, we're able to beat down Erica, and we can move on and face off against Giovanni in his hideout, which isn't too difficult of a fight. We clear through Giovanni super easily, and we actually double back. This next fight gave us a lot of trouble. Uh, we're able to get ourselves an Omnite, which is going to be a fossil Pokemon. We evolve it into an Omastar and then face off against a rival, which actually, Omastar actually didn't help us in this run. It was supposed to help me out more in this fight in general. Also, Omastar is a really good Pokemon anyways. It's going to be on my team for the rest of the game. And once we beat a rival, we're able to face off against Giovanni once again. Not too difficult of a fight over here, as you see. I am able to knock out Giovanni and move out into back into Viridian Forest, though. I want to spawn in some Weedles and catch myself a Weedle. As you can see, Mega Beedrill is going to be under the 500 base stat total as we face off against Sabrina next. In the fifth gym of the game, we're able to start the battle off against Sabrina using my Raticate and my Trevenant. Uh, we're able to crunch into the Ndidi and Shadow Claw into the Hatterene to knock out both of them on the first turn, obviously. And then we're going to double down onto the Crowdon, let the Porygon 2 activate the Trick Room, which is kind of annoying, but we need to knock out the Crowdon for this play because we couldn't stop the Porygon 2. We don't have that strong of moves. And then from there, she's going to switch out to her Ursaluna, which I know is going to protect and activate the Flame Orb. So I'm going to double down into the Porygon 2, knock him down to low HP. She's now going to switch out, I'm assuming, into her Gardevoir, which I should attack. I don't know why I attacked the Ursaluna, but at this point, I know the Ursaluna already attacked and knocked out my Raticate. So I know for sure the Ursaluna is going to protect. I'm going to go for an attack against the Gardevoir. I do some chip damage, but she's going to knock out basically both of my Pokemon, which is annoying. I go out to my Beedrill, and now she's going to for sure knock out both of my Pokemon. But this does waste a turn where Ursaluna is going to use Protect in the following turn. So we're able to double team against the Gardevoir and knock her out super easily. And then her final two Pokemon will be an Ursaluna and a Porygon 2, which we're able to knock out relatively easily and we're able to beat down sabrina on our very first try which is kind of funny from there you know we have to go down cycling road which which is a very difficult route in the entire game of radical red uh, i blacked out multiple times but this team actually held their own even though they're under 500 base stat total they're able to knock down most they're able to knock down most of the trainers without any issues as well they're pretty well synergized surprisingly and from there we could go into the safari zone and get ourselves a beedrillite which we're able to finally mega evolve our Beedrill. And then we're going to face off against Koga next. Koga is going to be the sixth gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against Koga using my Raticate to Swords Dance into a Swallow, which is a huge play. I am able to survive a Boom Burst and Sucker Punch to knock out the Swallow. Uh, Greninja comes out next. I'm just going to sack my Raticate, which is interesting. I'm going to knock him down to low HP. I've let my talent thing come out with dual wing beat to knock out the Greninja. His next Pokemon is going to be a Toxicity Tree. I'm able to go out to my Duxio, avoid the Electric type move. And then Earthquake into him, surviving with a Focus Sash, knock out the Toxic Street, and then his next Pokemon will be an Excelgore. I want to save my Duck Show because it's pretty fast, but at the same time, I guess I wasn't on the same page as me now. So Duck Trio goes down, I sack him, I go out into my Priority Talon Flame to knock out the Excelgore. Uh, I also stay in against the Drapion to Flame Charge and then Brave Bird into him to put him down at low HP. Since I know there's three Pokemon in the back, and I'm pretty sure I can secure the fight as I'm able to Scald into the Drapion to knock him out. And also into the drag pole. I go out into my Simi Port after sacking my Almastar and I'm able to knock out the drag pole. And we beat down Koga pretty easily. From there, we're gonna face off against Price next at Seafoam Island, which comes down to the wire with my last two Pokemon. 
as I'm able to knock out the Glalie, and we get the choice card from him, and then face off against Jasmine next. Jasmine's going to be even harder of a fight. I have to bring on my Breloon once again to face her, and I'm able to knock down her aggro and get the choice band, which is going to be very important for the next gym fight. We're going to attach the choice band onto my Duck Show. We're going to face off against Blaine next as the seventh gym leader in the game, and also the fire type gym leader. We're going to send in my Duck Show with the choice band to Earthquake to knock out the Torco. Then he sends out his Executor, which is a problem, so I decided to go out into my Raticate. Eradicate's able to Sucker Punch, not able to knock out the Executor, which is annoying. He goes down to a Weather Ball. I go out into my Town Flame, Flame Charge to knock out the Executor. He then goes out to Cinderace, which my naiveness actually caught up to me as I'm able to avoid uh, one of his moves, but I knock myself out with a Brave Bird and, well, down goes two Pokemon. So his next Pokemon is going to be a Typhlosion. I do have the Focus Dash on my Breloon uh, to Rock Tomb into the Typhlosion. And now I outspeed him. He's going to switch into a Sunflora, which I'm able to outspeed as I rock to him and knock out the Sunflora. He goes out to his Typhlosion, which, which I know for sure two of my Pokemon, my Semi-Poor with a Choice Scarf and Duxtrio, is able to outspeed. So I go out into my Amistar to sack for some reason. That was a bad play. I go out into my Duxtrio uh, to suck a punch into the Typhlosion. It does not work, so I have to switch out into my Semi-Poor to basically sack him to him. And then go out to my Duxtrio to Rock Blast and knock out the Charizard and also the Typhlosion. And we get the 7th gym match of the game, surprisingly. Uh, I did not think that would happen. Uh, from there, we're able to face off against Archer and Talonflame. Basically, solo down Archer pretty easily, as you can see. Uh, from there, we're going to face off against Ariana next. Ariana gets soloed by my Amistar, and we beat down Ariana and Archer. Next up, we're going to face off against Giovanni, which, which actually is a very difficult fight. Luckily enough, though, I do have Sucker Punch on my Dugtrio, which I don't know how it's punching, but we're able to Sucker Punch him and knock him out, activate his next form in Mewtwo, and then let Lance basically finish off the battle for us because we have no more Pokemon. So we're able to beat down Giovanni in the final Team Rocket boss fight, and we're able to face off against the 8th gym leader in the game. We're going to face off against Claire next. Claire is going to be the 8th gym leader of the game, and also Dragon type, I guess, I don't know. Uh, we're going to start the battle off against her using my semi port to Skull twice into her, looking for a Skull Burn, but it doesn't work. I'm going to knock out the Aerodactyl. She switches out to her Nagandel. I go out into my Duck Shield, catch it using Nasty Plot, and I have a Focus Sash on. She's going to go for a Sludge Wave. I've survived it, obviously. Earthquake to knock her out, and then she switched out to her Dragonite. I sh went for a Sucker Punch, went to try to break down the Multi-Scale, but I'm able to go out to my Amistar. Amistar is able to two-shut down the Dragonite, even though she gets plus three boost on her attack with weakness policy. From there, she switched out to a Magirna. I go out into my Talonflame. Magirna is going to get beat down by my Choice Banded Talonflame. I'm not too sure why it's Choice Banded, but we end up beating down the Magirna. She switches out to a Dragovish. I have no moves here, so I decided to go out to my Simiport just to sack him. Uh, lucky enough, I get a very lucky Scald, and that might have won me the battle, as I really don't have an answer for her at all. I decided to go out to my Beedrill. Beedrill is going to Felstinger, does not knock her out, so that was stupid. I am able to knock out her Dragovich in the second term. Her Duraludon comes out next. I'm able to do some chip damage, go out into my Raticate, unable to knock out the Duraludon somehow. Uh, on the first try, but I'm able to knock her out. But I'm able to knock out the Duraldon in a second <laughs> Sucker Punch, and we're able to beat down the eighth gym leader in the game. And we can move on and face off against a rival once again for the last time into the champion fight, obviously. But we're gonna beat down a rival pretty easily as his team is a uh, doo doo. Uh, from there, we're gonna face off against our other rival, which is gonna be Brendan, which he is even worse. He has all these legendaries and he's garbage with them. So nice try, Brendan. From there, I'm going to show you the power of Mega Beedrill. Maybe it hasn't had a lot of shine in my challenge video just yet, but Beedrill is going to Felstinger, get the plus attack, and then beat down the rest of this very tanky pink team. We're able to clear through the victory road and then face off against the Elite Four next. The Elite Four is going to be a pretty tough challenge, as our first Elite Four member we're going to face off against is going to be Lorelei. Lorelei is going to have her Ice Team, because... Of course she would. Uh, she can start the battle off against us using a Ninetales and a Glaceon. This works out for me because Beedrill is very fast and also Talonflame is very fast as well as I'm able to Flare Blitz into the Glaceon and Poison Jab into the Ninetales and we're able to get two knockouts without losing a single point of HP to them. Got more HP just staying in, getting hit by Hail and also our recoil damage. From there she switched out to her Zumro and her Rotom. This is free right here. I'm able to basically flame charge once again into the Rotom and then Poison Jab to one-shot the Zumro. She went for a Thunder Wave against my Beedrill, which is not going to work out as I'm able to Flame Charge into the Calyrex and also Poison Jab into him to knock him out. And finally, she's able to knock out both my Beedrill and Talonflame. But the damage has been done as she's on her last two Pokemon. Both her Rotom and also Abomasto is not going to take 
too much damage as I'm able to beat down the Bombstone and then switch out into my Simipore and I'm able to knock down the Rotom as well and we end up beating the first Elite Four member of the game super easily. From there we can face off against Bruno next. Bruno is actually a little more difficult as I'm able to start the battle off against him using my Talonflame. To do we be actually knock the Infernape for free. Next up he switches out to his option. I catch up using Swords Dance. I go out to my Doug Trio. Basically it's over. I go for an Earthquake and knock him out which is super nice. Survival at 1 HP 2. Now I don't need Doug Trio. I can sack him basically. Go out into my Beedro to do some chip damage against the Conk. Conk is going to knock me down to low HP but I'm able to knock out the Conk there. Sacrifice my Beedro against the Lucario, go out to my Amazon to sack him, bait him in into a close combat, and then I'm able to go out into my semi port to knock him out in one shot with a Scald. While he does not get knocked out, I lied. I go out to my Sound Flame to knock him out, thankfully someone can do it. And then from there, his Arshifu can't really do anything, and his Como can't really do anything, so I'm able to two-shot both of them, and the battle is basically over. So we end up beating Bruno. And now we gotta face off against arguably the easiest fight in the game. We're gonna face off against Agatha. Agatha is gonna start the battle off against us using Mysterious Zorak, which I'm able to Twin Needle. Twin Needle has 20 power. Twin Needle knock out the Zorak, which is super easily. She switches out to her Marshall next. I decide to go out to my Town Flame to just two shot him using Gale Wings, Dual Wing Beat, and that's all she wrote basically. She switched out to her Aegis Slash next. I go out to my Raticate, which is part normal type. Now it's an Aegis Slash. Now it doesn't have Sacred Sword. It's actually a special attacking Aegis Slash, which I'm able to just basically Sword Dance in front of her and then Sucker Punch to knock her out in one shot. Unfortunately, against the Spectre, I actually miss a Sucker Punch and my Dark type goes down without anything at all. I go out into my Duck Trio next to Earthquake and Sucker Punch to knock out the Spectre, which is super nice for us. She then goes out to her Sil Valley, which I'm able to get some cheeky Earthquake damage off. Go out to my Beedrill. I accidentally got trapped in with the Gengar and I just start hitting it with Poison Jabs and does so much damage that I'm able to basically knock her out. I go out to my Gale Wings Talon Flame to knock out the Gengar and also the Sil Valley and we end up beating Agatha super easily. From there we're going to face out against Lance next. Lance is going to be the 4th and final Elite 4 member of the game. We're going to start the battle off against him using my semi porch just the Scald and 2 Skulls will knock out the Aerodactyl. Next up he switches out to his Dragonite which I'm able to get a lucky burn on and survive an outrage against him. From there I am able to switch out into Eradicate, 2 Swords Dance, Sucker Punch, knock out the Dragonite which is super nice. Sucker Punch does not knock out the Dragovish, but I am able to go out into my Beedro to Fell Stinger to knock out the Dragovish. Unfortunately I don't have Drill Run as a move on my Beedro, which could be very useful but from there I am able to switch out into my Simipore to get a Skull Burn on the Melmetal and then I'm able to go out to my Amastar to Shell Smash right in front of him, survive any move from him. I go for an Ice Beam predicting the Dialga switch in, I actually predicted the Salamence but he knocks me out with a Roar of Time but I knock him down to low HP, Earthquake to knock out the Dialga, Earthquake to knock out the Melmetal. His next one will be a Salamence which I'm able to get some Rock Blast off against him. As he's able to knock me out and my final opponent will be this priority talent flame. You guys seen it for a little bit now. I am able to do wing beat, knock out the Salamence and end up beating Lance. And next up we're going to face off against the champion of the game, the final battle. We're going to switch up our items a little bit and then we're going to face off against a rival. We're going to start the battle off against a rival using my talent flame because I outspeed and two shot the Pheromosa making a 5v6. Bait in Yvelto though. We want Yvelto as fast as we can because Yvelto is going to be set up bait as always. I go out into my Beedro, take a Dark Hole, and I actually end up going to sleep against him, which allows me to go to my Amastar and just go down. So Amastar this <laughs> huge waste. Go out to my Raticate to double edge into him though. Get him down to low HP. He's going to suck punch once against me and knock me out. I go out into my Talon Flame next. Talon Flame is able to get a few Sword Stances off against the Yvelto as I'm able to Flame Charge into him to knock him out. His next Pokemon will be an Eternatus, which I am able to luckily knock out with two Dueling Beats, but I'm unable to knock out the Groudon as he's able to roar out my Talonflame, which is kind of funny. I go out to my Dugtrio next, Earthquake to knock out the Groudon, and then his Ditto comes out, it can copy my Dugtrio, but doesn't have the same item as me, so I'm able to survive his Earthquake, and he survives mine, but I do have Suck Punch to knock out his Dugtrio, and his final Pokemon will be a Mega Metagross. I go out to my Semipore, and Semipore gets the very lucky burn against the Metagross, survive it, Easily knock him down with burn and we end up beating the champion of Radical Red super easily. We end up beating the challenge. Can we beat Pokemon Radical Red? He's only 500 base stat total Pokemon and this challenge was actually pretty easily. You should try it out for yourself as this challenge wasn't too difficult. I just needed to build synergy and also use a bunch of Pokemon we haven't really used. I know I use Talonflame and Simiport quite a lot but you know what sometimes you can't have it all. But thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys can, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Anyways, my name is Ben Alpha. Hope you guys all had a great day, and I'm out. Peace.